Hey everybody, it's Gomletx, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Kaldheim, the snowy set for the winter season. Without further ado, let's just get into our pack one pick one, which is a pretty simple one here. Furia's Retribution is a super powerful card. It is one, two white, and a black for a 4-4 four, four flying angel warrior with vigilance that has already a cheaper version of Sarah Angel, which is a busted card in Limited. And if that angel sticks around, you can use the angel to destroy another creature next turn and then give it double strike on the third turn. Furious Retribution is one of the strongest rares in the whole format, and there's basically no uncommons or commons that I would take over it. Now there's this fellow, which is really nice. Shepherd of the Cosmos is super great late game in those white aggro decks, bringing back one of your cheap creatures and putting a flyer to finish things off. Struggle for Skemfar's green's best removal spell in the format. There's some great stuff in this pack, but again, none of it really going to compete with Furious Retribution. So for pack one, pick two now, we don't have a great follow-up to that. I think the best card in the pack here is Demon Bolt. It's pretty easy to cast, just requiring one red and two more. You can even foretell it early in the game, so it only costs one red to cast. There is Feed the Serpent, which is also a decent removal spell. The problem with this is it does tie us pretty heavily into black. We're already playing at least a little bit of black for Furious Retribution, but because the Retribution is double white and one black, it is pretty splashable. So we could try to end up in the stronger aggro archetype of white-red and take the Demon Bolt here and just splash in the black. Or we just take the Feed the Serpent and kind of bite the bullet and head, head into black here. Um... It's really close, honestly. Most formats would be just really obviously feed the serpents, but I think black is the weakest color in the set by a decent margin, and red it has a lot better aggro stuff going for it to go with the white, but I'm still going to take the feed the serpent here. Try not to make our mana too muddy and have to do any uh, three color stuff if we can avoid it. Unfortunately, the strongest card here is now a frostbite, so this is where we would have gotten really paid off taking the demon bolt. We could have gone Demon Bolt into Frostbite and pretty much cement ourselves at that point into red and hope that we see some white as well so we can be white, red, splash, and black for Retribution. I guess I should have went with my gut there and went with the Demon Bolt because um, it definitely would have panned out and these black cards are all just really not where you want to be. That's why it's one of the weakest colors in the set. It's just not a very deep color. There are a lot of very, very filler cards like these three cards. We do have Valkyrie's Sword here, which is really slow, but quite powerful. Seven mana to get a 6-5 Flying Vigilance on the board, and then you can move this equipment around later, which is nice. I guess I'll just go with that. Not quite as good as Frostbite, but I've already passed somebody a Demon Bolt. Now I'm passing them a Frostbite. Pretty much no way that we're getting any red cards pack too, and... <laughs> Time to pass a third Frostbite, and we need to avoid red like the plague if I pass this. At least for pack two. If I keep seeing all this crazy red stuff, then that means that pack three, because we're getting passed from the same people that we're getting passed cards from right now, we should expect to see just all kinds of red stuff pack three. Um, but who knows? It's really early in the draft. It's pick four, so these packs just happened to have a ton of great cheap red removal. Still going to be sad that I didn't just Demon Bolt into double Frostbite here, but Gold Vein Pick is a super solid consolation prize. This is a really helpful card for helping us splash things in if we go down that route. That route? That route? I don't, I have no idea. Um, I have no idea why it came out that way. Uh, and it's pretty good to put runes on. There's an equipment sub theme in the set as well, and uh, it just helps you dump your hand out pretty early. So Gold Vein Pick is just a really good card. So. Happy to go with that, and red is so open. And it's like the only color that feels that open. I guess this is a pretty late Jaspera Sentinel. That's decent for green. But white, we're feeling pretty cut off of white, which is really not where we want to be with Retribution. If we get cut off of white, it's going to be brutal. Um, I guess these cards aren't the greatest. I mean, Runamuck's really nice in red aggro, and Cavalry is just a nice filler creature. I don't really want to take Runamuck until I have the good creatures. A pathway here. This is a rough draft here. I might even just go Sentinel. There's some really multicolor splashy thing, although we've got no green yet. Probably don't do that. But 
Yeah, I mean, I'll take Sentinel. We're going to get zero red cards in pack two, pretty much guaranteed. All right, these might have just been awkward packs because now we have Stalwart Valkyrie and Battlefield Raptor both in one pack together. Raptor plays pretty well because cards like Goldvein Pick are pretty good in the format, and those are obviously great to throw on the Raptor. There's also a mechanic in the set that cares about casting two spells in one turn, so having a one-mana creature helps you do that more easily. Stalwart Valkyrie is really nice too, though. Flyers play pretty decently. This is a bigger, beefier flyer, and it can also help you cast two spells in one turn by being able to cast it for only two mana. So I like both of these a lot. I like both of these a whole ton. Um, I'm going to go for the Stalwart Valkyrie just because it's an angel, which works with Furious Retribution's second ability, which is like a little bit win more, but it's very cute. So I will go for that there. Um, Jarl Forsaken is the best black card, but it's not that great. I do have a Raven Wings, but I do have three cards that make flyers already. I might go for Rootless U here. Maybe we end up green, white, splash, black. And in that color pair with Jaspera Sentinel, we get more mana fixing than just Gold Vein Pick, which can be helpful. Rootless U is just a really good card if you have at least two creatures in your deck with toughness six or greater. That can be hard for a white deck to do, but in green... If we pick up a couple Ravenous Lindworms, we're going to have a very good time with this card. A 5-mana five 5-4 five, that, when it dies, puts a 6-mana six 6-6 six, six in our hand that gains 4 life when it hits the board is a super, super good deal. So maybe Green, White, Splash, Black here, and we've stumbled into a solid deck. Wings of the Cosmos is a very efficient combat trick for the white aggro decks in the format. Again, it wins combat in multiple fronts. Your opponent attacks in while you're tapped out. They don't expect you to have a blocker up. You can untap a blocker and make it bigger to kill something out of nowhere. You can also get flying out of nowhere if you need to chip in for a little bit of extra damage. You can play this pre-combat so that they can't block, and you can play this after they block to win the fight. So very flexible combat trick for only one mana. That is the super good selling point there, is that it's so cheap. We have a longboat here, which our sentinel can crew. We have a berserker if we end up in white-black just splashing green or if we just white black at the core and don't even play the green cards yeah if we end up in just white black and don't play the green death knell berserker is a pretty solid filler two drop for the white black deck and it gets a lot better when we have cards like the gold vein pick we have in here whereas god's hall guardian is i guess something we could grab off of rootless U, but not doing anything super exciting for the white green splash black deck uh if we can get a really wide board state Batter Shield Warrior can be okay, and that's about it out of this pack. Maybe Skull Raid if I want to be really rude and play some discard spells, but I generally don't love them. Uh, Grizzled Outrider is a really solid card. Coat Spell Cleric is as well, um, if we're in the white-black super aggro double spell build. Um, but if we end up in the green-white kind of slower deck that is playing some bigger beef down the line, 5-mana 5-5 five five is nice, although I do already have one 5-mana five 5-4. Five Kind of a lot for now. We'll go for the Code Spell Cleric. Now I can grab an Iron Verdict. It is not great removal, but if you don't have other removal spells, you got to make do with something. And certainly fine to take that. Pick 12. Hmm. Super late cavalry. I don't think I'm going to be playing Demonic Gifts at all, even though it synergizes with the Berserker. Take a long boat. Probably not going to get played, but it is a possibility. And see what we open up in pack two. Well, we do get the Lindworm to go with the Rootless U. The best card for the white, green, splash, black deck. For the white deck, we could just take a Stalwart here. It's the only thing that is 100% going to get played. But I do really like the idea of the white, green, splash, black here. Because I have not loved the black cards we've been seeing. Although I do only have two green cards, Rootless U and Sentinel. Again, Stalwart Valkyrie fits into either deck, but we're not going to get this Lindworm back, and it's really, really important to any green deck in this format. Yeah, we don't we don't have a hundred percent confirmation we're gonna be green, white, splash, black. We don't have 100% confirmation we're gonna be white, black, but we do have 100% confirmation we're gonna be white. So we'll just take the great white card there. Here's a Shimmer Drift Veil, which can help us out no matter what. I could take the Colossal Plow and start taking giant oxes highly. 
It's a pretty fun two card combo that's actually pretty solid. The Ox is a two mana zero six that can crew with its toughness. So it can crew the Colossal Plow all by itself on turn three, which can really win a game because all of a sudden you're ramping up a ton and gaining extra life and attacking for six on turn three. So that's obviously pretty busted. Um, I feel like though, since we're dirtling around with three colors, just have a Sentinel and a pick. I should probably just take the solid mana fixing and go with the Shimmer fail here. Nothing great here. I mean, nothing great for us. The best cards are Svela and Gravenlore. The two colors we're not really touching, unfortunately. Everything else in here is pretty much garbage. We'll just take a Raven Wings. Oh, Clarion Spirit's very, very good. Two mana for a 2-2, two -two, and whenever you cast a second spell each turn, you create a 1-1 one -one Flying Spirit. This can make your board state really, really big, really fast, and can absolutely just devastate slower decks. So very happy to see a Clarion Spirit there. That's a great one. Starnheim Courser, also pretty great. Super good with our um, our gold vein pick. Just random artifacts and uh, enchantments there. Super happy to see that. Uh, not much going on here. Yarl the Forsaken is fine. Playable. Oh, there's a Despair Sentinel and a Rootless Sea. Well, I knew I was turtling around with green for some reason. Now that I have a Clarion Spirit, though, I want to get so much faster. I guess more one-drops helps with that, even if they're green one-drops. I'll go just spare Sentinel here. Some weird kind of really low-to-the-ground green deck. Not generally what green is doing. I'll take a Master Scald here. It gives us a main deckable way to return Furia's Retribution from our graveyard to our hand to play it again. Also, if our opponent uses something like a Broken Wings to blow up our Gold Vein pick, we can also pick that up. Pack two, pick eight now. Another Valkyrie sword for super late in the game. That's about it. Way down is very medium removal, similar to like Iron Verdict. I am still low on removal, but I'm going to go Valkyrie sword. Pick nine, Ravenous Lindworm. I now know with 100% certainty, green, white, splash, black is the place to be here. And we're going to push towards that. Snakes can veil is an okay combat trick. It's a lot better than the green base decks that have a ton of big late game creatures because it's great at protecting those. Um, it's not as good in the super, super aggro decks that want to use Wings of the Cosmos more, but it's still good here. And I think I take it over Verdict. Pretty close, though. But I'm going to take Snakeskin Veil. I'm going to get more um, cheap green and white cards, ideally. I think I still played fe play Feed the Serpent, even though it's double black. Because I do have two Sentinels and Pick and Shimmer Drift Veil. Still going to be hard to cast the uh, Feed the Serpent, but it's probably going to be worth it. Um, it's all garbage, Revitalize, Warhorn Blast, Growth, all, all poop. Throw a Mammoth Growth on the side. Alright, uh, a bunch of poop we're not going to play. We'll take the uh, black card, take the Invoke the Divine, Weathered Runestone, and Funeral Longboat as the final pick. And pack three, pick one, we get rewarded by RN Jesus himself. A second copy of Clarion Spirit is busted in aggressive white decks. Again, we're going to be kind of a weird deck here. Green-white tends to be ramping into a bunch of big plays like Rootless Use and Lindworms, but I'm going to have double Clarion Spirit in here, so I really want to up the amount of one and two mana cards in here. I'm going to take Clarion Spirit, look for a lot of Sentinels and two drops and stuff. Okay, here's a Bound in Gold. We're pretty low on removal, so this is a great pickup for us, and it's better than the other on-color cards like Elderleaf Mentor and Longboat. Uh, not a ton here. I probably have to just take the sinkhole to help splash in the Furious Retribution and potentially the Feed the Serpent as well. Should be quite a helpful land for us. We don't have enough snow sources for Eyesight Troll to do anything, and even though the Ox is a pretty cheap card, 
It's not going to be super good at double spelling. I already have some good, cheap non-creature spells like Wings of the Cosmos and Snakeskin Veil. And uh, Longboat and Pick and Raven Wings. So uh, cheap non-creature spells like Wings of the Cosmos and Valor of the Worthy aren't that tempting to me that I need to take one over Sinkhole. If there was a great like one or two mana creature, that's where things would be really competitive in terms of what we should take. Uh, but there wasn't one. And yet again, no great cheap creatures. So just take a second copy of Out and Gold. Uh, no great cheap creatures. We have uh, Snakeskin Veil versus a Starnheim Courser. What is the creature count at? 12? Definitely need more creatures. We'll take a Starnheim Courser here. This does make it more possible to cast two spells in one turn later by making all of our cheap artifacts even cheaper, making that easier to do. This looks like primarily trying to trigger these Clarion Spirits with two two-mana cards on turn four. Because, again, we have to consider both of these Valkyries can get cast for only two mana, so we have all of this that we could double up with any two of these spells on turn four to trigger double spelling, so actually not that difficult for this deck to cast two spells in one turn, especially with two copies of Jaspera Sentinel ramping us up. So, might actually end up playing pretty solid for us. Could splash in a coal. I don't think I'm going to, though. I don't want to Super, super muck up my mana. But at the same time, I'm not going to play a second Raven Wings. I'm not going to put an army in here. I'm not going to splash in a way down. So I'll just put a coal in the sideboard, and I guess we could consider it. Wow. All right, third bound and gold. We found all of our removal in pack three. And the, the choices were really easy for us because every time we saw a bound and gold, there were just no one or two mana creatures in the pack anyway. So we didn't have to even figure out if I should take that over like the one mana first striking hawk or something like that. Uh, Wings of the Cosmos is fine. I'm still super low on creatures though, right? Yeah, 13 and I'm probably cutting one or two. Both of these creatures are very, very filler, but do feel tremendously low on creatures. I'll take the Doomscar Oracle. Not tremendously low. About 15 is what you want for an aggro deck. And, uh, yeah, we're likely an aggro deck here. All these Clarion Spirits, very happy to see a pick 9 Stalwart Valkyrie. That will be tremendously helpful to us. Pretty sure at this point, with all these Valkyries and Angels and stuff, we can just go ahead and cut Raven Wings and just play Natural Flyers mostly. Probably cut Longboat as well. Play Natural Creatures over Vehicles. And uh, we'll do more deck building when we get to it. Take a way down here. Oh, I guess I was counting the Valkyrie swords with the two drops. That is an issue that makes it more difficult. This needs double black to get cast. That's rough. We'll take a Valor here. Maybe play it. Don't think I'm playing any of these. A lot of funeral longboats in this draft pod. Just a lot of an open out of these packs. Just taking the highest rarity cards for Vault Progress. And it is about time to build this deck. Should be an exciting one to play around with. Alright, so here's a look at the deck as it stands right now. This is everything that I left in the deck during the draft. We are sitting at a 15 creature count with three other ways to make creatures. We have a Furious Retribution and two Valkyrie Sword, so we're actually basically at an 18 creature count. And I feel like doubling up on Valkyrie Sword is just a lot of mana. There's seven mana, ideally. We can play them for two and just move the equipment around, but that's not where they're ideal. So I think I'm going to cut one of these two. Just play the one Valkyrie Sword. And that essentially puts us at 17 creatures now. Um, 15 to 17 again, what you really want for aggro. We could drop a Doomscar Oracle. That is the weakest creature left in our deck. I would say Battershield Warrior is not great either, but it could be good with Clarion Spirit if we have one of those going off for a little while. I think I'm just going to keep it in. Cut three non-land cards here. For removal, we have three copies of Bound and Gold, which can shut off any 
permanent. These can stop planeswalkers, they can stop vehicles, can stop equipment from moving around, and can stop creatures from attacking, blocking, and using their activated abilities. So way more flexible than Iron Verdict, which can only stop a creature, and only if that creature is tapped and has five or less toughness. So not a huge fan of Iron Verdict in here. Also not a few, huge fan of Mammoth Growth. I do love one mana tricks, um, but this is a one mana trick we have to foretell for two on an earlier turn, and spending two mana to foretell early in the game with this deck is not great. We're trying to use all of our early mana to establishing a strong board presence and getting attacking, so we don't want to be foretelling early game, especially not for cards like Mammoth Growth that aren't giving us huge value for having foretold them. So not super into that. And then the next question here is really between Feed the Serpent so I don't have a double black card in here, or just one of the random creatures like Doomscar Oracle. And I think because we have the three bound in golds, we'll have at least three solid removal spells in this deck no matter what. I can go ahead and cut the Feed the Serpent and the mana base can just get nice and easy now. We have the one black card that just needs a single black symbol. We have a gold vein pick to produce treasures, two Jaspera Sentinels to tap for a man of any color, a Snowfield Sinkhole that produces black, a Shimmer Drift Veil I can play on black if I don't need to play it on white or green, and two Swamps. We have seven different ways in our deck right now to potentially produce that black mana. That feels like overkill. If I play Shimmer Drift Fail on a different color, then I only have five ways to do so, or six ways to do so, but that's still a lot. Because I have seven with the Veil, so I think I can cut at least one of these swamps, and I might even be able to just cut both. I think I'm going to play it super safe and still leave that in there, because I think our mana is still pretty good um, with a swamp in the deck, because we still have basically nine potential white sources and seven eight potential green sources which is still pretty high especially with like a gold vein pick and potential sentinels so i think the man is good enough we can run one swamp here and not be too hurt on our primary colors yeah so i think that's the mana base we're going to roll with and this will be today's deck all right here's a look at the final deck we're going to be playing with today kind of an interesting one here Primarily a white-based aggro deck with double Clarion Spirit. You're going to see those all over the place, but we've got some splashy stuff going on, and weirdly enough, we're not white-black or white-red Clarion Spirit. We're white-green Clarion Spirit, hoping to use our cheap green cards like Jaspera Sentinels to not only be able to cast two spells in one turn by playing a one-drop green card and another card, but also to potentially ramp us into making it easier to play two spells in one turn later, like playing a three-mana creature, and a two-mana creature in the same turn or something like that. So some cheap Jaspera Sentinels, some cheap tricks like Snakeskin Veil and Wings of the Cosmos as well. Gold Vein Pick, of course, producing some treasure tokens to help us cast two spells in one turn, and just trying to get a lot of value off of Clarion Spirit as well as various cheap aggressive creatures. Nice evasive ones as well with Double Courser and Triple Stalwart Valkyrie. So that should be pretty nice. We have the cheap removal to go along with them to try to get them in for damage with Triple Bound and Gold, and we have some good late game longevity. We can use our Sentinels and our Gold Vein pick to ramp into some big stuff like a Rootless U as a 5-4, Master Skull as a 4-4, and Ravenous Lindworm as a big 6-6. Also the Valkyrie Sword as a gigantic, what, 6-5 Flying Vigilance. It's a lot of big late game stuff as well when we are out of stuff to do early game. The one massive bomb in our deck was our pick one pack one that we have ended up just splashing in off of gold vein pick, double sentinel, and a couple non-basic lands, and that is Furia's Retribution. Again, just the strongest card in our deck. Produces a 4-4 flying angel with vigilance, and then it allows all of our angels to tap to destroy a creature with less power than them in the next turn, and that is important to note because we do have three stalwart Valkyries, which are also angels. So even if I play this and my opponent kills my angel warrior... If I have a Stalwart Valkyrie on board, I might still get to use this to blow up one of their random 2-mana two 2-2s two and get some extra value off of it there. 
then maybe even get some extra damage in off the third part of the saga. So it's like a pretty dang powerful splash and definitely the strongest card we could draw pretty much any of these games. So that's the deck idea here. Pretty strong one, great early aggro plans, decent late game finishers, and uh, and one Mega Bomb along with some decent removal. Kind of got everything we need, everything we want in a deck. Let's just see how the games go and see how the cards fall in today's Kaldheim Premier Draft. Here we are on the play for game one. This will be a keep. I don't have like a ton of great late game going on here, but I can just jam out a bunch of early game creatures and see what kind of damage I can get in with them. Start with Sentinel turn one here. Okay. Could play Code Spell and Doomscar Oracle on turn three really easily. Even if I don't foretell, I could just uh, play the Cleric and tap it for Oracle, but I guess if I foretell this, I can play Oracle first, then Cleric, so I get the plus one, plus one counter instead of life gain, which is definitely better to do. Could have also just played the Cleric, missed out on the plus one, plus one counter, just to guarantee I could play a Valkyrie turn three. That was an option there. Lose out on a little bit of plus one, plus one counter value just to get more aggressive. That would have been fine. Sculptor of Winter from our opponent. They do have a Highland Forest. So they can tap this to get another mana. Um, I'm going to see if I can just snakeskin veil that thing to death. Okay, I cannot snakeskin veil that thing to death. Can I just realize I, I misread these cards or I had them wrong in my head? I get both the life and the plus and plus encounter. I am a doofus. Um, I think I buffed the cleric. Because Sentinel's the creature I'm most likely to want to just hold back. Because I do have six and seven mana cards in this deck, as well as one black card we could use the man of any color for. And making these both two toughness means if I attack it in Snakeskin Veil, they will be big enough to not die to a Sculptor of Winter. And thanks to Jaspera Sentinel being able to get us a mana next turn, I will have the mana to play Valkyrie and Snakeskin Veil and double spell again, gain a couple life off Doomscar Oracle. So I can pre-combat attack with both of these, Snakes can Veil, whatever they block. And uh, then use Sentinel, tap the Cleric post-combat, get the mana for Valkyrie. That's only if they don't play a solid blocker here. If they play too good of a blocker that can easily kill Code Spell Cleric, then I would have some risk there of losing the Cleric before I get the mana out of it with your spare Sentinel. So Mask the Vandal from our opponent as just a 1-3 blocker. They can exile a card from their graveyard to exile an artifact or enchantment, but I don't have any fun tools around. I have a workbench of nonsense over here. Path to the World Tree from our opponent. They get to dig out any basic land, reveal it, and put it into their hand. They already have access to red, green, and black mana. Now they have blue mana as well, so they are working to get to all five colors for this. Once they have seven mana on board, they already have four. They'll have five next turn. If they can pop off this Path to the World Tree, it's a really, really big deal. It's uh, a one-for-one one immediately, because it immediately draws another card. It draws the land, and then it turns into a five-for-one one when they pop it off. They draw two cards, kill one of ours, and get a two-two as well as just uh, do some life drain in the middle there. So Path to World Tree will be a very bad time for us if our opponent resolves it. Um, they have a 1-3. Nothing we have has only one toughness, so I think I'm just going to attack with everybody um, and probably just play Valkyrie. But if they, like, block Cleric with Vandal, then I guess I could Snakeskin Veil and Corsair instead. Okay, if they do that, then Snakes can Veil won't kill Vandal, and I'm cool to just play Valkyrie. Alright, they are down to 13. 
I guess I could have played around uh, removal here, played it super safe, and held up Snakeskin Veil. Just not attack the Sentinel. That would have been solid, but they almost definitely would have blocked Cleric instead if we made that attack. And then I would have just cast the Snakeskin Veil to kill the Vandal, probably. I don't think I'd have the diligence to want to hold the Snakeskin Veil when I could get a guaranteed kill out of it. Alright, Gold Span Dragon's kind of scary, but I can beat it with a Snakeskin Veil. My flyer can become just as big as it, and they can trade into each other. I guess the problem is if they get any treasure tokens off of it, then their path to the World Tree is active next turn. Because as long as the dragon is on their board, all of their treasures make two mana. So if I bind and gold it, I have targeted with a spell, and they will get a treasure, and they can use that treasure to get two mana, which means they can go green, untap, red, blue, black, one extra mana, and then use the treasure to get a white and the second extra mana. So if I bind it in gold, they get to path to the world tree. I guess I can hold up a snakeskin veil so that they don't actually kill something with the path. It's probably our best play, but it doesn't feel excellent. It feels a little rough, but it is the best we can do here. Pretty much guaranteed. Let them path to the world tree and then snakeskin veil. Try to outrace in two attacks here. They're down to 7, but they're going to gain back up, be at 9 life when they sacrifice to the path to the roll tree. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They're going to choose to play Tyvar instead. I think that's better for us than if they just cracked path to the roll tree. I think we're more likely to be able to find lethal through that. Not if they have a one-mana creature, because that means they have three blockers total. Okay, that's pretty much just as good as Path to the World Tree would have been. Path to the World Tree would have gotten them a little bit of extra life and a 2-2 two -two blocker. This way they get two 1-1 one -one blockers, which is basically equivalent to that little bit of extra life in the 2-2. Two -two. Play Death Knell Berserker. That's super unfortunate. Now they have a 3-3. Three -three. They can use Tyvar to put a plus one, plus one counter on this, and then when it dies, they'll get a 2-2 off of it. It's kind of like getting two bonus blockers here. Yeah, wow, this is really bad. They're going to put a super, super wide board state here, and then still have the ability to crack the path to the world tree next turn and reap all those benefits then. Very much looking like our opponent can uh, can find a way to stabilize here. Okay, they're gonna get a counter on the sculptor of winter. I believe we can be heroes. Are they just going to dump out another creature here? That would be wild. Just play a Planeswalker and three creatures this turn. Now they're just going to buff the Ascendant Spirit. Okay then. Then they... okay. Um, they have two blockers up. They're both on the ground. Ah, uh, so what if they block both of these and take four? Go to three life. And I'll have two flyers on board, one of which I can give hexproof when they try to kill it with Path to the Roll Tree. I guess they go here, here. They have really good blocks if I don't cast Snakeskin Veil when they go for blocks. If I do, we can go trade, kill it for four. They're at three life. I keep a Valkyrie. 2-2, two, 1-2. Two, two. Their next turn, they'll have a 3-3, three, three, a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2 two, two bear. God, they just have so many blockers. Is it better to just hit them or kill Tyvar? Because I can guaranteed kill Tyvar. Kill Tyvar and Spirit and Berserker. 
Then they have a path to the world tree, but I don't have the snakeskin veil for. I feel like I have to just hold the snakeskin veil for the path to the world tree. Keep a flyer on board. Yeah. I think we have to kill this Tyvar so they can't just spit out one ones all the time, especially because they're going to gain some life here anyway. And then we just try to get in a position where we have multiple flyers that they can't deal with on the board. They get to gain up to nine, but uh, we're going to have a 3-2 flyer and a 2-2 two -two flyer. We'll have a snakeskin veil to make sure that uh, whatever flyer they try to kill with the path doesn't die. And then... Hmm, this block's a little worse for us than I thought it would be, but... That's true, they can do that instead. Alright, I still need to just hold snakeskin veil here. I guess the spirit can turn into a flyer, but they need more snow mana to do it. They need triple snow mana. They only have double, and that's only thanks to Sculpture of Winter. Yeah, so if they don't hit another snow source, then we're just trying to win the game in the sky in three attacks. No, two attacks. We hit for six next turn, and then we hit for six the turn after. I think that's our best bet here. Uh, I don't know why I didn't play the land. We should have just uh, dropped it there. I guess this plays around Elder Fang Disciple. But that wasn't intentional. We could have just played the planes. Yeah, I think the, the strat the strat is solid here. Although I guess I really no, okay. <laughs> the idea of keeping the flyers around at all costs, that's definitely correct. Um But if that's the case and I'm just racing in the sky exclusively, then Tyra doesn't matter at all. I was like halfway there. Halfway there in my head. If we had the magic online chess clock, I would have got there, but my hourglass was running out. So. I had that I Oh, they can't use Path to the World Tree because they don't have another treasure anymore. Oh my god. Wow, yeah, we should have just hit them in the sky. They were just super dead in two swings. Alright, well, pretty big, uh, pretty big punts here in the end. I don't know if I would classify it as punts. Punts to me is like some a play that works out really, really badly for you. A punt is like giving your own creature protection from white and then trying to put a white aura on it. Something like that. But th this was not the right line. Yeah, I should have realized that they didn't have access to the Path of World Tree, and that would have made it a lot simpler for me to realize that I really didn't need to kill Tyvar. Because then, like, all right, who cares? They get 1-1 one, one blockers. We just go fully in the sky here and hold up Snakeskin Veil. They would have been dead right now. Because, yeah, without the Path to the World Tree, they wouldn't have gained the life at all. As you can see here, they haven't gained the life. So, uh... They would have been dead at this point. We would have hit them for three last turn, and now they'd be at negative one. So that that makes it really, really obvious we should have just attacked them in the sky two turns in a row. Mammoth growth on the gold span to get the white source for Path to the World Tree, I think. Now they have the mana for Path to the World Tree, but I can Snakeskin Veil and still win. Thanks to keeping the Snakeskin Veil here. So... Well, I had the wrong idea. I was still right enough <laughs> in uh, in making sure that I protect my flyers at all costs that I won't get punished for it. I didn't have that wrong of a line. I could have had a super, super incorrect line where I just went for the kill on the Ascended Spirit when they went for a block. And then uh, I'd be super punished here. They would massively stabilize with this. All right, but now we guarantee we still have lethal, so we're good. All right, and that'll do it. That is game one in the bag in our favor. Some rough plays there, some loose lines. I was a little confused, but in the end, we did get there with some nice flyers. We'll take those. We are 1-0 heading into round two. Here we are now in game two with a clarion spirit to just do some nasty things with. 
very excited for this one. We are we're gonna do some stuff, that's for sure. So play our planes and pass the turn, waiting to play Code Spell Cleric on a turn where it will be the second spell that we cast. I'm probably just gonna foretell this uh, Doomscar Oracle and make sure by the time I'm playing Clarion Spirit, I'm immediately getting value off of it. Probably go Spirit plus Oracle next turn. Get as much power on the board as possible, as well as a 1 1 flyer. Don't really care about the life gain too much from the Doomscar Oracle, so I'm cool to miss out on that. Care a lot more about the 1 1 flyer. Opponent starts off with a Throne of Death and a Jaspera Sentinel, so they have a card draw engine here. Basically, three mana tap, draw a card. They have to have creatures engraved to do it, but they will mill themselves every turn to help get there. Seraph Realm Eater. That card is tremendously good against a board full of tokens. Whenever one of our permanents is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, they get a plus one plus one counter on it. And if it has one or more counters on it, they can remove all of them and exile everything with mana value less than or equal to. So if one of our cards dies, that'll have a plus one plus one counter. They can remove that counter to clear out all of our tokens. If two of our cards die, that will have two plus and plus one counters, and they can remove them to kill our Clarion Spirit and all our tokens. So, not a good time for us, and Bound and Gold doesn't even stop it. So, that's extra bad. However, Bound and Gold does allow us to get in for a lot of damage and just try our best to outrace that card. That's what we're going to do here. Right, so even if they immediately exile all of our tokens, we've gotten 7 damage out of just like getting a wide board here, which is definitely nice. Glittering Frost from our opponents foretells a card and passes the turn just to Jaspera Sentinel up, and that is it. Got a Master Scald here, nothing to return with it. Probably just play a Flyer instead. Um... Need to make sure none of our cards die so that the Realm Eater does not get a counter. Hit for seven if they don't block. And they do not block. They're going to go down to six. Um, We're only going to get an artifact or enchantment in our grave if they save Serral from the Bound and Gold, which doesn't feel likely. They're probably just keeping it around to try to exile all the stuff later. I think I just do my full 5 mana 4-4 um, four, four here. Because again, flying doesn't really matter. Their only blocker has reach, actually. Their only blocker currently. And Stalwart Valkyrie is going to be a lot easier to cast on a later turn, because... If they kill any of our creatures naturally, then it's just two mana for a 3-2 flyer. Send in the Sentinel. I'll take one. We are at 22, so we'll go down to 21 and just not deal with any tricks. Crippling fear it is. That is devastating. I get to keep Master Scald at least and put them down to uh, two. And that's a really dumb way to lose a game of magic, but it is cool. It is cool. But that is frustrating. Um, Rise of the Dreadmarn. Relatively, well, incredibly coin flippy card, because it's a dead card in a lot of hands, but if you can board wipe it to Rise of the Dreadmarn, it is very stupid. One mana to get four two twos seems pretty good. Well, they are at 6, facing a 3-2 flyer here. So, if we can get the Sentinel out of the way, we just need to hit them twice with this. And, uh... The other thing that's really rough about that is that was one of the few ways our Bound and Gold would end up in our grave. The only two ways is if they had main deck, artifact, or enchantment removal that didn't exile, which was extremely unlikely because 
Most of the time they would just have Masked Vandal as the main deck enchantment removal. That would exile it. And then of course the other way would be if they board wiped their own Seraph, which is equally unlikely because the only ways to do that are very strong rares like Crippling Fear. But I guess we could have got a Bounding Gold back to our hand if we waited on the Scald. And I am just playing it out here, but board wipe into four two twos gives our opponent a really, really easy opportunity to stabilize, especially when they have a card on board that's just sitting here as a card draw engine while I can't chip in at all. So we're tremendously unlikely to win this game. Vengeful Reaper. Right, random flyer is definitely good enough here to start shipping in. We can't really crack back. I guess if I attack with Lindworm, I kill three 2-2s two and then they're down to a 2-2 two two and a 1-2. So yeah, just hold back the um, flyer because it also has Death Touch. So it kills the Lindworm single-handedly or the Scald single-handedly. I pick and move around here. Not a ton we can do. Again, we're just playing this out just because maybe our opponent will mess up dramatically, or they have like no finishers and they'll end up milling themselves out with this throne of death. Those are our two outs. Both are super, super unlikely. Basically died the turn Crippling Fear Rise of the Dreadmarn happened. It's a pretty sweet combo. Very, very sweet synergy. It's a lot cooler than a lot of the other stuff you can lose to in Limited. It was super fancy from our opponent. Getting the death touch turn out of the way here. Struggle to kill the Lindworm as well. Yeah, I think their board, sti board state is wide enough to kill us in a few turns. They're probably not milling out here. Rootless use cool, but I did already draw my Lindworm, so it's not going to do anything when it dies, unfortunately. Oh, our opponent actually left themselves dead to us, top decking like a struggle for Scumfar. We don't have one in our deck, but uh, definitely could have. Very popular common in this format. It's actually kind of a risky just all-out attack there from opponent. We just struggle away the Gladewalker hit for six. Right down to 11. The saddest retribution. Oh, yeah, there's no way we're hitting them because... If we do, we're hitting for five, and they are not going to let that happen. Hopefully this is not the only the only game we draw Retribution in. I'm actually going to keep that on the uh, Scald. Getting really close to dead on board. We're actually exactly dead on board. Actually, they overkill for one extra point of damage. Take 10, because we can't block the Menace. We could block the Outrider and two 2 Power Creatures. Take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright. We will take that fat L and leave with our tail between our legs there.
heading into game three. Here we are for game three, another Clarion Spirit game. Absolutely roll with it. We even have our Swamp in the hand if we draw our Furious Retribution. Don't even need to protect the Sentinel to get there. Still going to play the Sentinel here. That's going to allow us to double spell on turn two, which is super nasty. We get to play the Spirit and the Code Spell Cleric. Spirit versus Spirit combat. Let's go. Buff the flyer, pass the turn. Playing against Red White, the strongest aggro deck in the format. Clarion Spirit into Starnheim Courser, though, so they don't have a way to double spell this turn. I can Battershield Warrior plus Wings of the Cosmos, which is pretty spectacular. So let's leave up that possibility. Even if they double block Clarion Spirit, I make sure it's alive. Alright, so they are not going to make any blocks, so we'll play Stalwart Valkyrie. Gold Vein pick from our opponent. Throw that on the Starnheim Corsa to get a treasure to be able to cast some more stuff more quickly. I will not take the damage. I will try very hard to outrace them here. We definitely have a board state that could do so. Tormentor's Helm is the play that does get them the Spirit Token. And they are going to equip the Helm to the Spirit Token. Now I can cast a Warrior plus Wings of the Cosmos without Sentinel mana, so we send the whole squad in. Okay, they get to kill the Valkyrie, but I will kill the Clarion Spirit. This is A-OK -okay with me. They can use their own treasure for their own Wings of the Cosmos. Well, that's pretty good. That would have happened to either place I used it. Fair enough. Double spell, get another creature, and have a Batter Shield Warrior to give the whole board plus one plus one on attacks. Demon Bolt on Batter Shield Warrior, fair enough. Throw the Tormentor Helm onto the Courser and attack. A very bold attack, I'm perfectly happy with that. It must have another one mana spell. No? Okay. Yep, this is... Uh... We're not going to double spell ever again. Got a six mana spell I'm gonna play, and then I'm just playing one spell per turn, whatever I draw off the top, so we attack like this, I think. Actually, we're getting aggressive enough, I could lose Cleric to Spirit. But I need it to play Lindworm, so. It's safe there. Put them down to five and play Lindworm. Alright, just hold blocks back. We've got a gold vein pick now. Slap it on a Lindworm and it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. They have to double block to kill it. They have to at least chump it. So they chump it with Clarion Spirit, kill one of these other creatures. So we attack with everybody. Actually should have put the pick on a different one and I'd be guaranteed lethal on board. I guess I'm already guaranteed lethal. They have to have a removal spell either way. But I should have put a pick on probably like a 1-1 flyer here. Alright, they didn't have anything in hand, so we're just going to hit for lethal there. Alright. Solid match there. Code spell cleric versus code spell cleric. Red white versus green white. And we get there in the end. Two and one, heading to game number four. Here we are in game four on the play. We're actually pretty far from Retribution. We need two more white sources to get there. Double green and one sinkholes. 
Not a great way to cast Retribution, but we can still get Courser out on three. Still going to keep here, but there's definitely risk involved. This Retribution could be a dead card for quite some time. Gold Vein Pick is going to help try to solve that problem, though. Could be very helpful for us. Our opponent is on red, black, green, and they drop Path to the World Tree, so likely a very multicolored snow deck here. The red, black, green, and white, sure thing. Kind of a rough start in this matchup. The best thing you can do against the multicolored snow decks is to try to just out aggro them, just curve out before they can do much um, to block your early aggro. Uh, trade Courser into the Recluse and then play a bigger flyer is the plan here. Here's the bigger flyer. Pass the turn. And there's their fourth mana, and they have all five colors. They just need another red or black source to get both in the same turn. Augury Raven is the play. Well, another great blocker from a flyer. Have to just keep trading our stuff off, and we'll just wait for another white source for retribution, I suppose. Play a rootless U this turn. And if they kill this one, then I get my Lindworm into my hand, which is sweet. And there's the red source, so they have all five colors every turn. They just need two more mana to sacrifice their path to the world tree. Luckily, we don't have any creatures left with two or less toughness, though, so... They won't be killing one of our creatures with it. At this time, there's a Redain from our opponent, which is actually really annoying here, because it makes Retribution cost six. But I guess I have exactly six mana if I draw planes, and I think I just do it. And if they don't kill this angel token, then this angel token will kill Redain. And then we have the Master Scald in our hand to recast the Retribution, which should be super, super nasty. Okay. I don't, I'm not playing a Scald this turn, so we'll just play a Sentinel this turn, so we can go ahead and put the pick on the Angel, or the U, either one. And then... Get our attacks in, blow up Redain. Hit for 10. Our right, opponent pretty much has to board wipe us to stay in this game now. I guess putting Sentinel on the board gives them something they can kill with Path to the World Tree, but if they crack Path to the World Tree, they're tapped out and they die to these. So that's fine. And if they board wipe, having a 1-2 left behind in our hand isn't exactly going to win us the game. Master Skull is much more important for that. Alright, so just tap out for Path to World Tree, except defeat. Because we are hitting for 10 in the sky with Furia's Retribution's Double Strike. Technically, they do chump the, uh, the Rootless U, but the Angel Warrior alone hits for 10 next turn with the Double Strike. So yeah. Tapping for Path of World Tree leaves them dead, and we're going to be 3-1 and one now, at least an average run today. But let's see if we can get at least another win here and, uh, and even things out, break even. Pretty fine hand here for Game 5. Get things started with your Sparrow Sentinel, which is always good. Another turn two path to the world tree. That is the third path to the world tree we ran up against today. A lot of that card flying around. 
I'm a big fan of running it, but haven't managed to draft one pack one in a while. And I usually end up just on these white aggro decks and then see the path pack three, which is always sad. So green, blue, at least from our opponent. Likely at least splashing all the colors for the path. Or tell our Doomscar Oracle on turn two, and they are going to drop a Not Bold Recluse. More mana for us to dirtle around with. Just play the Oracle and pass. If they attack with Recluse, we'll trade it into Oracle. That's fine. A second path to the roll tree. Oh dear. My levels of jealousy have risen astronomically. Opponent is doing exactly what I like to do. And we're on a slow enough start here. We could be having some issues later in the game. They could really be stabilizing. Uh, having the Rootless U and the Linworm in hand is always sad. The U is not going to do anything when it dies. But it's still our biggest attacker, so I think I'm still just going to play it this turn. Big, scary, rooty thing. Bunch of mangled roots. It's got like five legs. Oh no, it's like a spider-looking thing. I like the Lorman tree folk a lot better. The happy-looking, like, they're just faces carved into trees, you know? This thing looks... angry. Spirit of the Alder Guard from our opponent. Yeah, they are just on a beautiful deck here. Snow strategy looked wide open in their pod. That's quad snow lands. Four out of the five lands they've played have been snow lands. I mean, that is thanks to three separate cards they played to tutor out a land, though. All right, they play one more land and they get to start cracking path to the world trees every turn and there you go. Valkyrie's sword is the play instead which they also have more than enough mana to just dump it all into and here is where we fall astronomically behind the five color snow deck and there's not much we can do to recover because the snow deck's so good because it has great two for one cards all over the place and we don't have that many two for ones which means they're going to be going ahead in card value a lot and card advantage and the other thing is that it has plenty of cards that are both enablers to hit their mana for the late game and win conditions in the late game like spirit of the alder guard that grabs their mana early and just turns into a giant creature to kill us with later and two path to the world trees that also hit their mana early to help get to the five colors and then four for one us when they have the five colors later so, uh, this is where I'd be pretty happy to scoop if I wasn't recording, but I will do my best to try to get something going here. Because I can bind the angel in gold and attack with everybody, lose my rootless you. If I manage to draft a second Lindworm, that'd be a pretty solid play that could do something here. But since I'm not tutoring up a second Lindworm when I do this, it's not the greatest line, but it's the best one we have available for now. Yeah. If I could grab another Linworm to hand, that would have been a really good line. Play Valkyrie, they're just going to shoot it with Path. Shoot with Path, we get to attack with Linworm, then they have a 4-4 and a 2-2 two, two up. Double block there. 
these paths of world trees just end our life. Can't even really play this Valkyrie until both the paths of world trees are gone and probably not going to happen super soon. They might use one of them soon, but the second one they just kind of get to keep in the tank for whenever they need it. Berg Striders 2. Very good card. Move the equipment to spend an attack. Hmm. Well, no blocks here. Still at 17. If we can get past Bergstrider with another Bound and Gold or something, get their life total threateningly low. Unfortunately, we cannot. Hit a Shimmer Drift Veil. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm just going to scoop them up here. It's going to take another four turns minimum to lose, which is going to be like another 10 minutes. They still have the double path. I can't play a flyer to get through this. Lindworm doesn't break through because they'll just hold up a blocker. Scald doesn't do anything. It's too small to even try to fight the spirit. Yeah. I'm just going to scoop them up here. There's no way we're going to win this game. I know it doesn't look like we're dead yet, but I don't want to play out another 15 minutes of this. Our opponent has a very, very well-drafted um, five-color snow deck. And we did not have nearly enough early aggro to get in before they got the Path to World Tree manas. So it's pretty much a guaranteed loss. We will move into game number six. Uh, here we are in game number seven now, or game number six, with a really weird hand. I have two Sentinels to ramp into stuff later, which can ramp into my seven mana sword, but I have two lands plus two Sentinels and then no actual creature to be competing with. Got a bound in gold for early removal as well. It's an awkward hand, but if I hit any mid-range creatures, any two, three, four mana creatures, we can do a lot of good stuff with this hand. We've got the beginning and the end mapped out. We just need something to do in the middle. Clarion Spirit's immediately going to be a huge problem. However, Clarion Spirit, Clarion Spirit of our own gives us something to do in the middle. And now we're pretty happy. Mono white so far from our opponent. Gold vein pick. And Battlefield Raptor is their double spell to trigger their own clearing spirit. The gold vein pick, very good with those two flyers they just got. Four mana, I can play a Bound in Gold and a Wings of the Cosmos. That's if I tap a bunch of my creatures. I might go Wings plus Valkyrie Sword here. Just a double spell. Or I could let one of my creatures die so that I can cast Valkyrie for just two. Attack in a way that where they can kill one of my valuable creatures. Which they block super well, but I only really need one Sentinel. Oh, I just realized something. I'm a doofus. Oh wait, no, because Wings untaps. Never mind. I was going to say, I just realized I can't double spell this way because I don't have enough creatures. But then, yeah, Wings untaps and I do. Alright, so it looks like we're just going to play the Valkyrie Sword. Pick on to the spirit. How badly do I think they need the treasure? Four, five, 
six. They haven't cast any spells here yet. So even if they need the treasure to cast a spell, it's not going to let them double spell. Unless they play two one mana things. Rune of Speed onto the pick. Okay. And draw a card. Okay. Cannot double spell unless I get a creature into my graveyard to make Valkyrie cost two and bound in gold for three. That would require tapping two of my creatures and having something in grave, which is just not going to happen, so. Also don't have the mana to put sword on something and still play Valkyrie, so I think I just play Valkyrie. There's our stalwart Valkyrie, and we're passing the turn. Spectral Steel on the Clarion Spirit. We know they have red cards at least at this point. If I chump with Valkyrie, I crack back for five and they probably cast nothing. And I bind and gold the spirit next turn. If I let them get the treasure, they probably play another blocker that I can bind. I can just sword my creatures. It's really tempting to chump here. Don't think I will though. It's probably just gonna bound and gold the spirit. Whatever blocker they play here. Probably not as good as a 6-5 Clarion Spirit. Oh, it's a removal spell. Wow, yeah, I really should have chumped them. They wouldn't have had the treasure to do that. Hey, Furious Retribution. I guess I'm playing that. No bound and gold here. Just leave a 1-1 one -one Spirit to chump block with. Then I have a 4-4 four -four to block the non-6-5 body. Yep. Furious Retribution it is. Pass the turn. Alright. I won't be able to kill anything with my Valkyrie because even though it gains that activated ability, it can't activate any of its activated abilities. Opponent's deck is really powerful here. Just a uh, white-red equipment deck. Bunch of super cheap spells. Very, very, very impressive deck for bronze. It definitely shows off that uh, your limited ranking does not 100% correlate with, uh, with your limited skill. I think our opponent has drafted a very strong Boros deck here. Definitely chump, so they don't get the treasure. It is also 7 damage, which is notable. Um, I have lethal on board. If I just killed a token here. I think I want to hold up a bound in gold for post-combat. I'm already lethal. Okay. Wait, is it going to let me actually use the Valkyrie? Because it gained the ability afterwards? It doesn't read like that should work, but actually I should have checked. 
Sure, it gains the activated ability, but this says its activated abilities can't be activated. This doesn't like make it lose all of its activated abilities, it just says you can't use them. Yeah, I don't think I could use this Valkyrie. I think it was just showing off in blue to say it's got a bonus ability, even if it's unusable. Alright. Rough game for our opponent there. They fought they fought back pretty hard, pretty well, but uh, Furious Retribution just a uh, ridiculous bomb, and it is going to steal the victory for us, and we're going to be 4-2 and two heading into round 7, at least breaking even in this draft. Here we are, game 7 now. We have nothing to do early game. Sword, we're ideally playing at 7, Valkyrie on 4. We're going to have to mulligan this, and we'll keep this. We've got a Clarion Spirit now with Jaspera Sentinel. For a cheap card to play with it, we could do those both on turn 3, I guess. We get rid of the seven mana Valkyrie Sword, because Batter Shield Warrior does work well with Clarion Spirit. Grab our white source here. Turn three Spirit plus Sentinel is the plan. Battlefield Raptor from our opponent that is very good at blocking spirit tokens. Alright, double spell it up, get a 1 1 spirit with flying, and see what we draw into here. Opponent is firmly on blue white so far, with a gold vein pick for the Raptor to start ramping up with those treasure tokens. Very nice. Alright, exclusively lands drawn for us, so we don't get to double spell with this battle, sh battle shield warrior. Still gotta just put it out here and try to keep life total pressure on as best as we can. Opponent has the ability to play six mana worth of cards this turn thanks to the gold vein pick. Could be explosive. Gods Hall Guardian, it is a 3-6 Vigilant Blocker. That is unfortunately another land for us, so we are officially completely out of gas hitting for one a turn taking two a turn not exactly a winning position especially when our opponent has five more cards to play around with as well this could be it for us mystic reflection on god's hall guardian so any other creatures they play come out as a copy of it they just play one more creature so they basically used Mystic Reflection as an aura that gave this plus one plus four and removed lifelink from it. So not the greatest Mystic Reflection ever, but still fancy, still very cute. There's a Starnheim Courser. This can't really beat a two, three flying first strike here on Battlefield Raptor is just nasty. Even if I block with all three of these, they first strike away the Courser and then the Raptor doesn't die, so I'm just going to hold this to maybe double spell with later. Spectral Steel to really buff up one of these Vigilant God's Hall Guardians. I can go to one life if I want. I think I need to keep all my flyers to actually be able to kill the Raptor potentially. But then I'm not doing anything about the Guardians, I'm just dying to them.
Yeah, we're just mega dead no matter what we do. And more spells from our opponent of another Valkyrie here. And another land, so we won't be able to double spell and get a blocker. Gonna take two turns to die here, but we don't have outs. Furious Retribution doesn't even win this game at this point. Just not enough gas to follow up our start. Solid start with Clarion Spirit, and then a whole lot of nothing off the top, unfortunately. Four and three, it'll be not bad at all. Not bad at all. Pretty much breaking even. It's where I like to be. If I could four three every draft, I would be super fine with that. So all in all, not horrible whatsoever. Um, overall, I think I drafted solidly. I don't think I played super duper well, but I think most of our losses were going to be losses no matter what. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty happy with how I drafted. Just stick to white for the retributions. Worked out pretty well. It was open enough, especially with double clarion spirit. Um, the one thing in the draft that could have gone differently was if I moved on to the Demon Bolt early and had drafted a bunch of red cards pack one. I think that would have likely been the best position that we could have gotten in had I known the future and known we were going to get a bunch of just solid red removal spells immediately. Again, it was a really close choice. I think without the information of what's coming in the next pack, it was a really, really close choice between the um, Demon Bolt and the Feed the Serpent. Um, because the Feed the Serpent, again, sticks to one of the colors of the cards, card that we'd already taken. But we did end up just splashing in the retribution anyway which would have made the demon bolt a better pick and had we scooped up the demon bolt then we would have been in the position to this is the stuff that i couldn't have known um I, but uh yeah i couldn't have known that scooping up the demon bolt would have put us in the position to take all those frost bites but i did know that it was it was a distinct possibility I'd just be splashing in Retribution because black is just not that deep of a color, and in that position I'm unlikely to play that Feed the Serpent over the Demon Bolt, and we ended up in that position, so we definitely got punished for the pick of Feed the Serpent over Demon Bolt. That was the biggest decision, I think, in the draft, the biggest place things could have gone differently. And again, had I scooped up Demon Bolt, Frostbite, Frostbite, that's much less of a signal that red is open to whoever I'm passing to. So potentially we pick up a bunch of decent red aggro cards in pack two and become the red white double clarion spirit deck because we'd still have taken pretty much just as many white cards. Um, so white would have been just as open to being able to scoop up these clarion spirits. So we would have still gotten all the great white stuff and maybe the red aggro stuff would have just been better than the, uh, the green stuff we got. Again, I'm not unhappy with the green stuff I got. I think with the way that we drafted pack one, with the way that things were open, um, green ended up being the most solid kind of secondary color to slap in here with a couple sentinels that work really well with the clarion spirit. Very, very happy with how these, these two cards work together. So happy that I hopped onto that late Jaspera Sentinel for just primarily a white deck, but with a little bit of green um, Jaspera Sentinel nonsense to make it easy to, to do the clarion spirit stuff. That worked out super well. Very happy with that. But um, but yeah, the Feed the Serpent versus Demon Bolt. Draft could have gone differently there, and maybe then uh, we could have had a 7-win deck. But uh, not, not too unhappy with this deck overall. Again, played pretty well. I think this deck probably averages to 4-3. Could have done better, could have done worse. Not horrible whatsoever. And uh, yeah, decently happy with the draft. But that is going to end today's video. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to let the YouTube algorithm know to send you some more of these videos in your recommended feed. If you'd like to hang out with me and chat with me, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. If you would like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. And as always, just thank you very much for watching. 
I will see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.